Hi guys, welcome back. Today's video is a deep dive on the Western Anatolian factions and AOR units in RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6. It's taken from a longer video that I did with Mausolos on the history of Thrace and Anatolia. So check that out in the description and the unit videos on all these units you're going to see in this video. Without further ado, guys, enjoy. Uh, but on to the Anatolians. And uh, let's talk about the Anatolians. I had a couple of questions then about the Anatolians. So, of course, the Anatolians, for many, many, like hundreds of years, were under Persia, right? Uh, and then suddenly Alexander comes along. And we're not too long after Alexander's death. Uh, but at this point, would the, were the Anatolians still probably a distinct culture in that regard? Or would you say they were very, you know, sort of Persian? Uh, or by this point, had they become a bit more Hellenized? Or was it just a big mix of all those cultures in there? Yeah, I mean, Anatolia originally is just a, it's just a region name because it, yeah. from the Greek word Anatolia for east. And if you look at a map, Anatolia is obviously east from Greece. Yeah. <laughs> Hence the name. <laughs> um, no, Anatolike um, it refers to the eastern lands. Um, but within Anatolia, we have... Uh, huge number, uh, huge diversity of, of uh, various um, distinguishable cultures. Mm. And even though we have an Anatolian rebel group, it also does not really represent all Anatolians, but only some which we could um, somehow group together. Mm. Because um, in general, um, there are, of course, stronger Iranian and Persian influences in the eastern part of of, um, of Anatolia, Anatolia, on Cappadocia, on Pontos, for instance. Um, while of course in the west we also find strongly hellenized groups um, like the carians in the southwest of anatolia but also the Lith lycians had their own polis greek style city states in in, in the south and in southwestern asia minor and um, meanwhile in the northwest as we already said the bithynians and the phrygians have thracian influences um, and of course, they were under the Persian Empire, most of them, but I think there's two factors which are often ignored. The first one is that more, most of the northern coast of um, Asia Minor was never really under Persian rule. Mm. We talked about Heraclea Pontica in Sinope last time. Yeah. And um, there's also the Kingdom of Pontus, of course. Um, and a lot of these states in these, these areas, even though uh, Paphlagonia, too, even though they were under influence of, uh, of the Persians, they were not really conquered. and. And even though the Pontic, the Pontic um, Cappadocian, they are of course Iranian, um, they had an Iranian elite as, at last, um, the Iranian um, religions, uh, like the meat thrust cult. Um, and, um, you, you have to, um, yeah, you have to realize that overall, um, the northern part was not really under Persian rule, uh, definitely not under direct rule. And, and those parts which were under a Persian rule, they had satraps. And some of them are very independent, which uh, will yeah. soon bring us to our first. I mean, which with, I mean, where do you want to start? Um, <laughs> are we well, starting with the Carians and the Chrysaurian League? <laughs> uh, well, I was just going to start with the sort of. So there's a few areas in this one, guys. Everyone at home. Um, yeah. So there's a few areas that are AOR recruitable areas that are not factions. They're just recruitable areas for troops. Um, so mainly because of the influence of the Seleucids and Ptolemies over here. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll go through, we'll go from Mycia first. So that's around Pergamon. Um, so yeah, Mycia. So in terms of Mycia, is it, is it just this sort of area? Is it a larger area? Is it a smaller area? Or is it just a couple of cities? Yeah, it's, it's the area around Pergamon. You can see that Adramition, just north of Pergamon, has... Yeah. Um, Missiars as the region name. It's basically this kind of region, and the Missians. I think they also. I mean, they're strongly Hellenized on the one side, but I think they also have some Thracian um, relationships, so to say. Yeah. <laughs> some Thracian um, genealogy. Um, so there's that region, and basically above that you have the Troat, named after Troy, of course. Um, which you can see we have basically Alexandria Troas, which is somewhat near Troy. I think it's, it's between that and, um, yeah, the next city in the inland. I mean, Assos is probably there on the coast, yeah. It's between Skepsis and um, Alexandria on the Troad. I think Troy is there, but I may be wrong. I will check the ads there. Um, 
I remember in our our in our exams at, at at university because obviously I'm uh, an actual historian. Yeah. These <laughs> <laughs> examples and people always get um, get a map where they have to put in five or ten ancient cities and some of them are like ridiculously easy. Yeah. And there's also po just points on the map, and you have a map like the mini map uh, there of the whole Mediterranean or the whole Roman mm. Empire. And then you're supposed to put Troy there. And I, I always felt that was a bit of a um, mean task because people <laughs> mix up Troy and Pergamon. And yeah. if you imagine the map is really small, they're not really <laughs> too far away from each other. And yeah. um, that's always a question a lot of students got wrong. And <laughs> to be honest, I could not guarantee I would have got it right in every case. <laughs> it's only the mini map up there. You can see there's basically no difference between Pergamon and Troy, but that's how some professors are. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two 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 notes on that mouse loss first of all uh if anyone at home didn't think you were a real historian after watching the first video and watching you know the the, <laughs> the rest of this video then i don't know what you've been watching <laughs> secondly i was thinking when you said name name some ancient cities that <laughs> that it was just like a list just list five you just put alexandria or antioch and you'll be absolutely fine <laughs> just like yeah alexandria okay done <laughs> five marks <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I remember when I took the exam, the guy next to me was just, um, I mean, he, he lowered his voice and he said to me, it's Antioch in Sicily. And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, he put it in Egypt and I was just like, what, what can I do? I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I, if I think it's in Egypt, then I mean, yeah, there's nothing I can do. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Anyway, um. So let's go to uh, Lydia then, which is again not a faction; it's an AOR unit. Oh, so we didn't say about the uh, the units of uh, Mycia. Oh, yeah. So the units yeah. of Mycia they have the Mycian javelin men and the Mycian archers. Um, so yeah, on to Lydia then. Unless there's anything special about those boys, Lydians. So yeah, Lydia. So uh, they have a couple of unique units: the Lydian Acontistai and the Lydian Hippocontistai. And they are, as you can see, the the region of Sardis, again, has the, the name of the area as Lydia. So, in terms of this region, how big are we talking again? Are we talking predominantly around Sardis or just in, sort of, Sardis? It's a bit of a uh, bigger region, really, than the Mysia, I'd say, because it's stretching almost all the way to the coast. And the Lydians, of course, um, they had their famous kingdom on the Crusus. Um, the man who invented money, basically, and mm. who was famously rich. And, of <laughs> course, it was, it was Croesus who sent to the Oracle of Delphi, according to Herodotus, before attacking the Persians, and he asked what's going to happen. And he said, uh, and the Oracle said that a great kingdom is going to fall. So Croesus went through with his um, decision to attack the Persians, but he was defeated, and it was his own kingdom that would fall. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the Lydian kingdom was conquered by the Persians, and Cyrus the Great, the Persian king, um, he wanted to burn him um, for his uh, for his uh, insolence, basically. Um, mm. But Croesus um, somehow he was a bit of a bit of a charmer and manipulator. So while he was already being put on, um, how do you call it? I don't even know the word in my own language just now. Um, on the um, um, sorry, um, oh, uh, sorry, the the pyre, the pyre, the, the stake, mm. whatever. Yeah, while he was being put on there, he still talked himself out of it and was was appointed as the royal counselor. <laughs> well, he, <laughs> but, yeah, he, the, he invented money though, bro. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was just he like, like he just like it like, was just falling out of his pockets, and they were like, okay, we'll let you go. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, the first coins, probably the oldest coins. I mean, I saw them in the British Museum once. They mm -hmm. they they are from Lydia, so the first. Uh, f first um, minted there and um yeah um that's what lydia became famous for for its debauchery and luxury <laughs> <laughs> but in truth in the third century they're mostly hellenized and in, in the interior they still keep to all the traditions of course but um uh yeah by the end of the century uh by the end of the hellenistic period sorry they they they, they very much lose the language and strabo says that the lydian language um is almost gone mm. So yeah, a very um, around that region. So, if you start as the Seleucids, you will have Lydia, of course. 
And uh, yeah, around that region, in case you don't know, guys, Sardis is pretty much your your predominant training hub in this region. So very, very important for you as a Seleucid. Uh, and it will also allow you to get those AOR units as well, which is pretty cool. Um, so on to Carrier and the Chrysalrian League, which is yes. AOR again. And it's an emergent faction. And uh, we're talking around Halicarnassus down here, aren't we? Yeah, the region uh, stretches um, from Halicarnassus on the coast to um, Aphrodisias in the inland. It's basically uh, the last city here in Caria and Kaunos there in the southeast is still in Caria. You could debate if Miletos is actually in Caria as well. Of course, it's it's, it's an Ionian Greek city. Hmm. But um, during the, the, the Ionian revolt against the Persians in 499 to 494 BC, they also um, fought against... Um, the Persians, the Carians, together with the Milesians and the Praenians. Um, the only time in history Praen and Miletos probably fought together. <laughs> yeah. they won that in the last video. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the Carians were, of course, under the famous rule of the great Mausolos in the 4th century BC, who erected the Mausoleum, but really he only started um, building it. And his sister, wife Artemisia, she finished it after his death and after drinking his ashes. <laughs> That's a famous painting of that, which goes back to an Anatolian tradition, which we also see, of course, in, in Egypt, for instance, the, the marriage between siblings, which is a symbolical thing. So it was not like Mausolos and Artemisia had any, had any children together, but they married his... Mausolos would have his mistresses, but he would marry his sister because um, she would actually follow him in this position, and that could only be trusted to family members. Oh, right. <laughs> Basically. And of course, Caria is a region which had very early connections with with the Greeks, and there were a strong uh, there was a strong degree of Hellenization under Mausolos who moved the capital from Milasa in the interior to Halicarnassus on the coast, where he built the the mausoleum, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, and. Um, at the same time, there was also some uh, a stronger emphasis of a Carian identity across all Carians, and. Um, yeah, I think it's important to note that um, he was one of the most powerful satraps in the Persian Empire and he was very autonomous for long periods of time. He took part in the great satraps revolt in the 360s BC, but then when he saw that was failing, he, he rejoined the Persian Empire, so to say. Um, so this is on your earlier question again, of course, if these people were not just under Persian rule, they very much retained their own identity and um, mm. yeah, had somewhat of an independent history. And the Carians. And they already appear in the Greco-Persian Wars uh, under the older Artemisia, which features in the second and pretty terrible 300 film. <laughs> yeah. But there, Artemisia, the older, um, she um, <clears throat> she fights for the Persians. She's shown as the Persian commander, which is um, not really what Herodotus says. Um, it was more like she, com <clears throat> she commanded, sorry, she commanded her sorry. own ship. Um, and she, she fought bravely in the battle. But of course, if you sign up Eva Green to play her, then you have to give her a bigger role than just having one ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of things I could say about Kari, obviously, because my nickname is not Mausolos for no reason. But yeah. you can also see Artemisia is in the second 300 film, which is already a lot more than we can say about the Thracians and popular media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and of course, Mausolus and Artemisia and the story is well known. And then later on the, in the dynasty, um, when Alexander the Great arrived, the local ruler Ada, she could convince people that she was actually the aunt of Alexander the Great, even though there was obviously little basis for that. <laughs> and um, the Carians in the Hellenistic period, they, they uh, fell under the Ptolemaic Empire and the Ptolemies gave them a, lot, a whole lot of freedom. But then Ptolemaic control weakened after the, uh, during the Great Egyptian Revolt, which start, started at the end of the 3rd century BC. And Caria was conquered by the Seleucids. And then when the Seleucids lost against Rome, Pergamon and Rhodes in 190, uh, 188 BC in the Peace of Apamea, um, the region was given to the Rhodians, and this already brings us to the Lycians as well, because Lycia was also given the adjacent region to the east. It was also given to Rhodes, and both would rebel against the Rhodians, and then the Romans uh, would actually acknowledge that and set them free. And the Shirza Aurelique was initially more of a religious um, 
um, federation between some of the um, uh, Karain cities, mm. but um, in this period it would, would also acquire some political significance, and that's why we've gone for them as a faction. And since they're Karians, um, they fought for the independence in the second century BC, and they had a glorious history before, history before that. They can also spawn in this game. Yeah, fantastic. You know. And uh, they, so in terms of their uh, unit roster, again, carrying light infantry and carrying heavy uh, infantry as AOR units in the carrying areas. Uh, and it's cool if they can, uh, that they'll be an emergent faction as well. So on to the next one. So Lycia and the Lycian League. Down here around Xanthos and Patara down in the south with the Ptolemies. And we've already got some generic Anatolians up here as well. Uh, now, yeah. these guys, again, AOR, and they are also an emergent faction as the Lycian League. So, uh, these guys, when did they come into being? Or when did they, I guess, disappear under the Ptolemies is probably more of a uh, question there. Yeah, Lycia was another satrapy of the Persian Empire, and again, one with great autonomy, because Herodotus describes that Lycian marines fought in the Persian army in Greece, so they had they, they still had their own fleet and the satrap as well, and a strong um, ethnic identity, um, very much related to the Carians, um, not as strongly Hellenized as them, but also strong Hellenized, especially in the coast, because we ha you had a lot of polis, Greek-style um, city-states there, and then... Um, we, you see there's a lot of cities there because yeah. there are a lot of important Lycian cities and um, they are well known for um, their um, tombs, their mountain tombs, which are engraved or built into the sides of mountains if you visit Lycia today. Cool. Uh, that's a really beautiful site. And, um, yeah, they had a century under the Persians and they would then fall to the Ptolemies, just like Caria. However, just like Caria, when they were finally given to the Rhodians, after the Roman Seleucid War, um, they also rebelled and attained their independence, and they formed a strong league of at least 12 polis and smaller towns. And um, this league, found in the early 2nd century BC, it would survive for quite a long time and play an important role in the Roman Civil Wars as well, because different parties would, would um, favor them and try to win their assistance. Yeah. And it would only be uh, annexed in, I think, 44 AD by Claudius, needed to enlarge the Roman Empire somehow. <laughs> yeah. And of course, we'd also go on and invade Britain. Um, so yeah, in ex Lycia, but the cities retained a whole big degree of independence. Um, and the Lycians were um, are genuine ethnic. I mean, they had a strong ethnic identity, as I said. And they have some very special units, like the Marines mentioned by Herodotus. Yeah. Some units without shields and some having animal skins thrown over them. So oh, cool. I think they're, they are awesome. The units are absolutely awesome. Yeah, so they've got, in terms of their unique units and the AOR units, they've got the Lycian Archers, the Lycian Hoplites, uh, the Lycian Marines, like you like you mentioned, and the Lycian Drepanophoroi, which is a word I've not heard so far. So what does that mean in terms of military units? Yeah, the Drepana is a weapon used by um, the Carians and the Lycians. Hmm. And um, uh, it is mentioned by Herodotus, and it's a bit of a scythe-like thing. Cool. <laughs> you could probably say. Like a... Um, yeah. It's a bit shorter than, than what you would use um, in agriculture, maybe. So you can also be used in Malay. But yeah, wow. <laughs> the Grim Reapers Malay. coming to get you. <laughs> like hundreds yeah. of them. Jesus. Absolutely. That is scary. Absolutely. And both Carians and Lycians were just famous as mercenaries. And I mean, a Carian was also a word for a mercenary sometimes. Like Galatian was a word for barbarian. Mm. Carian could be used for, for, mer for mercenary. And the first attested mercenary in history is also Carian, who served in Egypt in 600 BC. But the Lycians were not far off from there, also appear in all sorts of armies, like not just the Ptolemaic one. And um, both of these peoples were just very warlike because they had some bigger cities at the coast. But for most people, obviously, lived in the mountains. And you can see it very yeah. well now on that Lycia that there you have a whole. Uh, region in the interior without any cities and of course these people would live a harsh li and poor life in the mountains and um, yeah go going abroad and becoming mercenaries was a route out of poverty for them okay cool interesting very cool so I like the Drepanophore already I'm assuming they'll probably be AP then maybe 
armor piercing. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I'm not 100 percent sure on that, so don't don't quote me on that, guys. We'll we'll see tomorrow when we uh, when the uh, Thracian and Anatolian AOR units video comes out. So make sure you check that out. Make sure you like and subscribe. Like we've no, said. I think I think we've said everything, and we hope you enjoyed the video. And we will you'll be back soon because there's a lot of more a lot more IS content coming up. Even though most of it is going to be without me, <laughs> but it will be sad. with Red Z. And it will also be with a certain Japanese villain. <laughs> <laughs> what, Mr. Cherry? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, don't call him a villain. He'll he'll uh, you know he'll uh, he'll get upset and make me make more videos tonight. <laughs> oh no! You see it now. He's killing me. Huh? Yeah. Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. But anyway, <laughs> uh, thank you very very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure. Thanks once again to Mouseloss for both of these videos. Honestly, the breadth and the depth of knowledge is quite astonishing, to be honest. I've learned so much during this. I hope you guys have too, as well. Uh, I mean, if you knew all that, then you must also be an ancient history expert and historian as well. So, honestly, I can't see anyone out there not having learned an absolute ton from those videos. So, thank you very much, Malzlos. It really has been a pleasure. Which means thank you in Greece. Yeah. <laughs> in Greece. <laughs> uh, modern Greek. Hence uh, is it Greece. Um, yeah, thank you very much to, to hosting me and having me once again. And again, thanks to everyone watching the video. And um, yeah, you should all look forward to the release of RIS. And now the debate starts. Which is the best faction? Which one do you want to play? And <laughs> who should conquer Asia Minor? <laughs> if the answer is not the Seleucids, then you're wrong. Um, but no, no I'm joking. Yeah, no, I'm joking. I, well, I, yeah, I want to play as uh, as uh, older, uh, Ana, Ana, not Anatolian. Sorry, Gangra. Where's Gangra? Get Gangra and just chill. Yeah, Paphlagonia, like you say, just chill. Again, I didn't realize where they were. Uh, maybe I've got a mental. Maybe they were so chill that they're like camouflage. They don't. They're not even like. They're not even. I think that was the idea, to be honest. Yeah. They just got a little hill. They put like nets over it so no one can see it, and then they just all get uh, get there and, uh, and just chill out and are like, we're not going to attack anyone, bro. Uh, we're just going to calm down. Playing yeah, tall always, as Gangra. Really that's awesome. that's your challenge, guys. <laughs> Playing tall as Gangra. You just have to start as Gangra, finish as Gangra, no expansion, and see whether you become the richest nation yeah. in the world. Yeah. Um, Please, we want to see a screenshot of, of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, good luck. I don't think you'll become the richest nation in the world. Spoiler, uh, but yeah. <laughs> you, ne you never know. The gold is flowing in Gangra. That's why uh, they hid out in the hills for so long, because they had so much gold flowing. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. Maybe Midas visited them and, and touched every building. <laughs> well, that's why they were so quiet. Maybe Midas ac accidentally touched, like, nearly everyone. And there was only yeah, a few yeah. people left. And they were just like, well, this is pretty terrible. We've lost all our friends. But now we have a lot of gold and we don't want anyone to know. So, uh, you know, they started burying all the bodies. Uh, gold bodies. I don't know what I'm saying right now, honestly. <laughs> I really don't know because gold, which you do not sell, is not really worth anything, is it? Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, but they, no, they were, they were hiding out. You know, that's why they chilled out, though. They were hiding out in case the raiders came. They were worried about the yeah. Galatians and the Thracians because, you know, as as we've talked about, the Greeks framed the Thracians as being very, very violent and uh, raiding all the time. Uh, but yeah. Uh, they were just worried. They were very, they were very worried about uh, about people coming. That's why they hid their gold, of course. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> let's ignore that conversation. And uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure, as always. Make sure you do like and subscribe. Um, that would be fantastic. Stay tuned for more RAS Weekends content coming out tomorrow and next week. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And I will see you all again on the next video. <laughs>